Our next story is in Somalia, which has suffered another day of bloodshed. This latest attack happened in the capital city, Mogadishu, where an Italian military convoy hit an explosive device. It was not immediately clear if there were any casualties as a result. Then, a hundred kilometers away, Al-Shabaab militants carried out a major attack on a U.S. military base used by U.S. forces. In the past three months alone, Al-Shabaab has carried out several major attacks. In July, a suicide bombing in Mogadishu killed the city's mayor inside his office. A few days later, the group targeted a popular hotel in the usually safe town of Kismayo. Then, just a little over a week ago, they raided the El Salin military base, killing more than 20 Somali soldiers. I'm now joined by my colleague, Tomi Oladipo, who's reported extensively from Somalia and covered Al-Shabaab for many years. Good to have you, Tomi. So what do we know about today's twin attacks? Well, if you look at the attack that happened in Mogadishu, that targeted an Italian military convoy. Most of the time in Somalia, when, uh, when people are moving around, especially foreigners, and most especially Westerners, they move with very heavy security. So for this convoy to have hit an explosive like this um, shows that Al-Shabaab must have planned this very well, or there must have been some lapse in the convoy's own security. Uh, but then the major one, I would say, was what happened in the Balidogle uh, military okay. facility. That's a major air base, uh, just uh, not far from Mogadishu. Um, it's an air base that's used mostly by the US forces. They train local uh, Somali military there, but they okay. also use it as a launch pad for drone attacks. Uh, and um, Al-Shabaab militants uh, ra raided the place. They used a car bomb to try to breach the perimeter, the, the, the external security, and then try to storm it with gunmen. They were repelled, uh, but the fact that they even tried this in the first place mm -hmm. shows uh, that they've become even bolder. Okay, so they've become even bolder, uh, as you say, um, by what we've seen in this attack. But give us a, a sense of just how big the presence of Al-Shabaab is in Somalia. When we hear from the government, they almost give the impression that this is a group that they're diminishing. But how, just give us a sense of the scale of how much these people occupy in the country. Well, the government for years has said they've been pushing Al-Shabaab back. Uh, but think about it. It, you have the Somali National Army, you have the US forces, you have the African Union, Amisom troops as well, all of them working together to fight Al-Shabaab. Mm -hmm. But Al-Shabaab is present, has a major presence in southern and central uh, okay. parts of Somalia, where it's not just carrying attack, attacks, it's not just like a pest, it's actually in certain parts of, of the country operating like a government, it's taxing locals, uh, forcing people to pay taxes, otherwise it threatens them with attacks. So this is a group that's trying to be a kind of de facto uh, government in, in these parts of the country. But as I mentioned, it's also getting bolder in the kinds of attacks it's carrying out. So not just general attacks on the people, but going for higher profile targets who are even better protected than the average Somali person. So that shows that this group is not just bolder in terms of its spirit, but also has the resources to try and carry out these attacks. Right, I mean, and that begs the question, what they accomplished today, what does it tell us about the overall fight against Al-Shabaab? Well, clearly, if, if all these uh, foreign and local forces are working together in the air, on the ground, um, even offering amnesties to, amnest, uh, to Al-Shabaab militants and giving them a way out of this militancy, and yet that's not working to stop this group, then clearly that military approach is not working and there probably has to be more to be done some other way, um, maybe involving the local communities, maybe offering Al-Shabaab the option of, of talks which Al-Shabaab has actually rejected. It said it doesn't recognize this local government. Uh, it, it calls it an, an, an infidel uh, government. And so it says it's not going to engage with them. But clearly this military strategy on its own is not working and there has to be some other approach for a long-term solution. All right. Well, we'll keep our eyes on that story and thanks for, for that insight. Tommy Oladipo, thank you.